Well, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today is Wednesday, and it is actually also day 10 of our Bible challenge. And so if you have not been a part of that, I hope that you would start today. But the Bible challenge is every day we're reading a chapter of John. And so being the 10th day, we're in the 10th chapter of John. And so I hope that you have enjoyed your time so far in our Bible challenge. I think it's been awesome. It's been amazing to see what everybody posts on Facebook about the miracles they're seeing, the ways that God is moving in their lives. But more importantly, it's amazing to see so many families that are reading the Word of God together. I have mine right here. My wife and I, we've been reading some together. Um, for those of you who know, we have a, a brand new baby. And some of you saw on Facebook yesterday that my wife was sick. So I'm at home today with her and, and Benjamin, our new son. And I'm actually sitting outside right now. You may hear him actually in the background crying. Um, it's feeding time and he's hungry. So anyway, those of you who are with me right now, maybe you're hungry to read some of God's Word. And so we're just going to dive right into John chapter 10. And so I'm going to sum up the uh, whole chapter with two words. Good Shepherd. And, and truly, the whole chapter is about Jesus describing himself as our good shepherd. And so, if you were to read, or if you've already read for the first few verses, all the way up through, actually, uh, verse 6, he describes how he is the, sh the true shepherd and how um, some people are going to come and they're going to act as though they are shepherds, but really they're just thieves trying to steal his sheep. And I think if we were honest with ourselves, we would recognize that there are thieves that try to steal us away from the truth of God's Word. And sometimes that may be things like uh, pornography or addictions in general. Sometimes finances can be a problem for many folks. Relationships. And so those things aren't necessarily people all the time, but nevertheless they try to steal us away from our true shepherd and so uh, Jesus he says that he is our true shepherd and and here's the cool thing we've been seeing this verse over the last few weeks as we've done the life series and it's the verse that has been our, our big kind of verse verse 10 of chapter 10 and so if you've read it already it says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And I love that verse. That is one of my favorite verses in the whole book of John. John 3.16 is good. John 10.10. And the reason I love it is because Jesus doesn't come just to give us life, but to give us an abundant life, a great life, a happy life, a fulfilled life. And so to me, the crux of this whole chapter is that Jesus is the true shepherd and he came to give us life. Now later on through the, through the rest of the chapter, people begin to question him. They've seen him do miracles and amazing things, and they just say, hey, are you really the, the, the Messiah? Are you the Christ? Tell us plainly so we can understand. But Jesus, he doesn't do it that way. What he says is, my sheep know my voice because they are mine. And so today, I want to challenge you that if you have not made Jesus your shepherd, if he's not the Lord of your life, if he's not the one that you put your faith and your hope in, you might want to reevaluate life. Because ultimately, the whole point of the gospel is John 10.10. 10, that Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. I hope that you've been enjoying our time together over the last few days, 10 or so days, and, and I hope that you continue in the Bible challenge. I'm going to give you one question today, and that question that I want to give you is how can you know that Jesus is the true shepherd? Now, you can make it personal, how you know he is your true shepherd, or you can make it generic or general so that other folks might be able to better understand how they can find Jesus as their true shepherd. But nevertheless, answer in the posts below, how can you make sure that Jesus is your true shepherd? I love you guys. 
Hope you're doing well. Please continue to pray for my wife. I'm going to give a little plug there. Um, she's doing much better. She had a high fever, almost 103 last night. Came up real quick. But God has been blessing her and healing her. And so thank you all for your prayers. I know some of you have been asking online today how she's doing. So I figured I'd take this time and let you know. But thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you again.